today is a illustrious day in your life this is your college life is starting today speakers before me have tried to frighten you that you will have to do very hard work in order to survive i think you are matured enough to understand that you have come out of the swimming pool and now you have entered the sea so you are now on your own this is the big bad world that you are entering and when you complete the course and go out to survive you will find that all the advice that has been given today actually falls in place you saw the introduction to your institution there was a lot of dance and drama and fun and frolic of course you will be enjoying yourself while you are here but what the institution the society the community the world at large expects from you is slightly more than that today the whole world is in a turmoil you see there are conflicts raging all across the world there is violence there is anger there is death and destruction and as i was reading somewhere a large part of this happens because the mind is not at peace there is a lot of violence in the mind and i think that you guys are lucky not only to be in sharda university but you are doubly lucky because you are pursuing courses like art and design and media and architecture art design media architecture music painting these are the kind of training that imparts peace to mind if every child in the world is given a basic training in art i can bet that the world will become a better place to live in it will automatically see an end of violence but besides the fact that you have to go out and fend for yourselves there are larger challenges and demands waiting for you to be fulfilled professor shah told you that it's a country of 1.2 billion people approximately 20% of that forms the age group that you represents and this about 120 million people are represented here today by a handful of you so you carry a very big responsibility life is not all about dancing and twisting and picnic you are expected to bring about a social change through the education that will be imparted to you how how can an artist bring about a social change how can an architect bring about a social change well that is where the challenge is and i think you have to start gearing yourself up from the day one that it is not about only passing examinations it is not only about bringing yourself to a first position or a second position but what is expected of you is that you will not only become a very good professional but you will become a very talented individual citizen who is going to bring about social parity who is going to bring about peace and calm in the society and who is going to change the society by the sheer thinking power that you will develop while you are here i will take this opportunity with the permission of the dean to show you some slides that i have with me this are examples not necessarily of architecture as such because as an architect when i travel when i look around i find there is so much beauty around the world and if you are trained and if you are at peace then you find that you don't have to go very far to see that you are surrounded by things which are wonderful how best you can continue to make these wonderful things of some sort of a meaning and incorporate them in your day to day life and in your design so that they can help bring about the kind of a social change that we are talking about so i hope that that we talked about 
technology, climate, the way of thinking, the way of the society, all reflect in your built environment. Here says these are examples from very highly sophisticated Western society. This is the BMW headquarters in Germany. You find that the thinking is very technologically driven. Next. You can see the forms are so different. And here is, of course, the simplicity. And how that simplicity of rectangles and squares can also produce permutation combinations. Again, technology has taken a big leap. Structures are now being made in a very different way. This is the new wing of Heathrow Airport in London, which is delightfully light. And it's a state-of-art technology in steel structures. As you can see, it makes the whole place appear so light. We are getting away from the brick, concrete, RCC, to a very light steel structure system. And of course, we'll be shunting up and down. This is Amchi Mumbai. And we'll be talking about Mumbai. As you can see, the Sapnoki Nagari, where people pack off and go, and uh, one of the biggest slums of Asia, Dharavi, is supposed to be placed there. It's a wonderful city, how it functions. There is a certain amount of discipline. I think this is something that we need to learn, that in order to succeed, discipline is necessary. So, on the one hand, you find slums, squatters, hundreds and thousands of them scattered all over, unauthorized, and on the other hand, there are glamorous high-rise buildings. So it's a, it's a world which is at once clashing with itself and coexisting. Then we have some other examples of a country where we are officially told that the poverty line is shifting between 30 to 40 percent. So while some people have no homes, some people have too much of a house, as you can see. Architecture also gives you the power to overdo things. And this is where your self-control comes in. So here you find... Then India is, of course, a very highly religious place. Our own ideas of religion are very different. And as you mature, I would like you to do some thinking. And here is a typical temple. And you can see the dirt and filth all around. We don't seem to mind as long as our own house is clear, clean. Then we collect all the dirt and throw it out. Now, these are the kind of things that we have to apply our minds through design, through intervention of social change and social engineering. How can this mindset be changed? Next. These are, on the other hand, some of the cathedrals in the West and how they are maintained and looked after. This is the main cathedral of Salisbury. It's a beautiful building and the government and the, the church itself, they, they spare no expense or effort to keep it absolutely tipped up. And this is a very strange uh, case. In Tokyo, in a garden, I find that when the tree is falling down, they are so concerned that, you know, the branches will fall off. So with the Japanese precision, they support the tree. Now, this will give you an idea of the cripple who is begging money from you at our roadside crossing. How we don't seem to have much bother about that person who has got crutch or he doesn't perhaps even have a crutch for himself. So this is, this is the difference that comes into society's thinking. And that then reflects ultimately as the character of the society and it takes it on a path of growth. Here is a flower basket presented by the Municipal Corporation of Salisbury. Our municipal corporations are not known to present baskets. 
flower baskets next this is a model of a complex as you can see is a national historic park and the model is a braille model it is for the benefit of the blind people visiting they before going inside they can feel where they would be going and uh, you know they can have as much of a pleasure some of the innovative ways and some parts of our country are so endowed with natural flow of water from jharnas and next and then when we find that when man does the same thing you know how we crudely sometimes we do this these are pipelines laid on top of a gutter now this could be anywhere in india this is actually somewhere in the northeast but this could be anywhere this is another interesting example from dublin uh, at this point they discovered some old quarters the 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 buildings didn't exist but they had some semblance of the foundations that lay there so they very carefully drafted the outline of the foundation that was here at one time so it's a kind of a reminder of the heritage